Hi everybody, it's Joe Chaffee on this now Tuesday and Kovu the Cat has joined me. I, I, I want to go through all the models tonight because there are distinct differences that I think need to be pointed out and what this all means with regards to what may or may not happen on, on uh, late Wednesday night and Thursday. I'm going to start with the NAM model and we're going to take it through. Of course, you know, we're going to have this uh, first event with rain. Uh, some snow up in northern New England, some snow back up uh, in the northern in West, northern Wisconsin, over through northernmost Michigan in the Upper Peninsula, but a little freezing rain in the in the uh, southern lower peninsula. The low moves out and moves to the northeast. You know, we mentioned that because this is not nearly as well defined as what was being shown, uh, you're getting you're not going to get the lake effect snows that you thought you were going to get uh, in those areas, and then it just moves away to the northeast. Now, here's where we, we start watching what the NAM does. There's a, a low, lower pressures down in Oklahoma and Arkansas. And what the model does is it brings that low out to the northeast. This is Wednesday evening sitting in uh, southeastern Kentucky. And it moves it up into West Virginia and actually lowers the pressure uh, with it. Starts to develop all this precip across southern Pennsylvania and Virginia and snow across Ohio and Pennsylvania. And then the low itself winds up moving over southern Delaware, and then it continues to intensify once it goes off the uh, New Jersey coast, south of Long Island. And something like this would produce some pretty hefty snows. I mean, when we take a look at what the NAM did, uh, we're going to see that it has some um, pretty, uh, important snow amounts and we'll just take a look at that and you know it really did generate from central New Jersey and Long Island northward uh, six eight nine ten inches and even some higher amounts as you go up into the Hudson Valley and into Connecticut and the reason it does this is because it has this intense low that relatively intense low that moves off the New Jersey coast and straddles just offshore however um, it isn't a, it is kind of alone in this now uh, and, and we're going to switch to the GFS model uh, the GFS model if you look at the comparison between with I'll just start with the snow map and work backwards but when we switch to the GFS model which it better do oh it goes uh, barely a coating to an inch over New Jersey in the Hudson Valley actually gives a few inches and a little dot on the tighter map you'd see it it was a little dot of four inches uh, over over uh, central Long Island uh, and that's it so you ask now well why did the GFS do that well why don't we take a look first at what it does at in the surface and then I'm going to show you the differences aloft in the jet stream pattern what the GFS does is that it, it basically doesn't have nearly as much coming out at all as far as what the NAM was showing where the NAM has a definable low in uh, eastern Kentucky uh, the GFS you can barely find it now here's the Wednesday evening on the GFS and here's Wednesday evening back on the NAM and you know there's a big difference between that and and this it, 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 it just you know it, it's a totally different look uh, it here we have you know cold air that's coming down from the north and just basically sl slowly overwhelming everything and not leaving enough room I, I want to take a look at the four kilometer NAM because I really didn't take a look at this until um, till now I'm looking at it for the first time and it's very similar to the 12 kilometer NAM and the three kilometer NAM also pretty much the same so the NAM seems to be in one place and the GFS is in another and I think the differences really stand out when we look at the upper air of both models so why don't we take a look at this okay so uh, here is the GF let me just back it up we'll go to uh, Thursday morning and I'm going to switch first back to the GFS I'm sorry to the to the NAM and show you the difference and where the difference is is right here okay 
here's your tr here's the <clears throat> the upper air trough on the GFS on the I'm sorry on the NAM, and right here you can pick out a definable uh, second short wave. That that is what the NAM keys on to develop this low and then track it out northeastward uh, just off the coast. But when we go to the GFS, you're going to see that that's not there. And if you think back to this past weekend when, people, when, when everybody was looking at what was possibly going to happen for last weekend and it wound up being a cold front because there was no definable system in the southern stream of the jet stream, well, same thing. You can hear we have this northern trough just basically dominating everything and you, you the, the flow here is very fast and very smooth you don't there's no short wave none so if that's the case you're going to get a low that's going to develop like the gfs has which is going to be a bit of a flat wave that forms on the front and then runs out uh east northeast now the gfs does give some snow but you know it basically says north and west of new york city uh, and then, you know, pretty much north and west of uh, northwest New Jersey doesn't get anything. Uh, north of Route 15 in Connecticut, north of 287 in the Hudson Valley gets very little. And that maybe you get a coating to a couple of inches uh, further south. And, and that would be it because then the low just moves out and then it turns very cold Thursday night and Friday. I think either way, we're going to see it turned very, you know, very cold here. We'll probably be down in the low to mid teens here on Friday morning and not out of the 20s. So this is the problem. Uh, if, if you, you know, I would feel better as a forecaster at this point uh, that if at least one of these global models uh, showed something like what the NAM shows. Now, the, the Canadian, for the first time, actually does finally does show some sort of a wave it's been really not showing much of anything and here you have a low in central north carolina uh thursday uh, 1 a.m and then it's off the north carolina coast and then it just kind of moves east northeast from there it, it straddles snow up to about new york city and long island and that's it and you wouldn't get very much uh, if this would be the case and then it turns very cold thursday night into friday why don't we look at that upper airs from this model and see if, if we can pick out the differences. And, you know, the Canadian actually does have, you know, you can just pick it out. It's weak. It's not as defined as the NAM is. So here's the Canadian at 60 hours, which is Thursday morning. And I'll, um, we'll, we'll switch back to the NAM. See, that NAM has that kink right in here, and the Canadian does not have that. It, 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 you can barely find it. It's more that northern trough just taking over, and I'm telling you, if that's the case, then, you know, we're talking about a minor snow event here. I have to say at this point, you know, looking at the NAM, back to that NAM surface that we, we had, and, you know, let me just switch it here. So this is the... This is the NAM surface, I'm sorry, this is the Canadian surface Thursday morning. Here is the GFS surface Thursday morning. The low is even further northeast than what the Canadian has. And then you look at the NAM, and you've got this low sitting in southern Delaware. So, I mean, all those three positions have three different outcomes in terms of what's going to happen. Now, you know, I, ha I again, I... You know, my feeling is after seeing, you know, the runs tonight, it's hard for me to really accept this in terms of what the NAM is doing. I would be, um, I would expect the NAM to cave to the GFS's view or the Canadian's view or something in between, or at least come away from this idea of a low, a 991 millibar low uh, that deepens to a 986 low southeast of Montauk. When I first saw that tonight, I was, I was, you know, astounded. And then it moves, you know, south of Cape Cod and moves out. Um, I would be shocked if the next run of the NAM, which uh, is uh, comes out, will be done at 4 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, uh, shows this uh, again. I'm going to think it's going to come in with the flatter look. And if that's the case, then, you know, we're talking, you know, not much in terms of snowfall. Now, you know, I, I, I'm not... 
going to completely throw in the towel here, but I have to say from the standpoint of looking at this from a snow perspective, it is very, you know, it is discouraging. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, just kind of leave that part of the part of this here now. Uh, let's see how much of the GFS we have, because I did notice, you know, as we look longer term, I'll widen out because I want to get everybody um, a picture of what's happening nationwide and 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 put it put it all in perspective of course while this is going on in the east we've got another storm coming into the west into the northwest and into california uh and now here comes the next low across the border and there's a warm front that's running southeast from there and the um gfs and the canadian both have this idea this is going to be for friday night into saturday there's some sort of warm front in here uh and there might be now, there might be some snows ahead of it <clears throat> on the order of a coating to a couple of inches if that sets up like this. The GFS wants to drop that low southeastward into northern Pennsylvania and then just gradually redevelops east of Cape Cod. Um, if you are you know, if you really wanted to see something more substantial, you would want that low to be somewhere, you know, much further south. Uh, none of the models at this point are doing that. And when we move forward now i'm looking at this with you for the first time so now we have another low on sunday approaching the ohio valley with a little bit of cold air that's trying to wedge in here in the northeast so it has some snow at the start sunday afternoon and then it goes over to rain and then we get a low that's in the gulf of maine new england gets it again especially central and northern new england this is their year apparently and then that goes out and while the rest of the u.s is generally going to be on the mild side it looks like the east is going to be uh, in a different situation and in fact uh, we have a, a, a fairly impressive looking system uh, around day 9 or day 10 that goes off the mid-atlantic coast each run of the model on this has been further south so we'll see if that's real or not and another high coming down so there's cold air uh, going out to day 10 and then you you know we, as we move along you know, it kind of wants to keep it colder in the east now. So what's changed in terms of the upper air pattern? I think we've been, we've been seeing hints of this all day. There is a, a very strong blocking signature that's developing in the upper air going into uh, the latter part of February. And, you can, you know, this is going to apparently now prevent the eastern part of the United States from getting warm for more than a day or two. You've got this big blocking high that builds up in Greenland. And, you know, I think that's going to at least, it's certainly going to change perspective as we go into the second half of the month. And it does keep things more active and colder in the east with potential opportunities for uh, precipitation. Um, I don't know how else to, to, to look at this because of the fact that, you know, if you've got this block up to the north, the model seems to want to do this. It's done it for several runs now. The other models are kind of doing the same thing. So we're going to be in a state of uh, volatility and flux as far as um, uh, dealing with weather systems are concerned going forward. So the pattern looks to be very active. Um, I think there's going to be other opportunities besides whatever happens here on Thursday. And again, at this stage of the game, I would say um, that. My own feeling is that the the, um, the flatter look is probably the one that makes most sense, given the fact that the models have been overzealous with these uh, short waves in the southern part of the jet stream that either are very weak or don't seem to be there. So I'm thinking the next run of the NAM will cave to the uh, GFS and, and cave to the Canadian, maybe not completely, but to some degree. Uh, I would also caution in the other direction because uh we've already seen it happen a few times where the models have done this and then suddenly as we get inside um 48 60 hours uh things start pinning back further northwest and i, I and, and and i want to leave the door open to that possibility my i'm not going to make any changes to my original snow forecast i had made a general three to six inch area of snow uh covering much of new jersey long island and um, Connecticut and the Hudson Valley. I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm not going to make any changes at this point, and I'm not going to make any changes through tomorrow morning. I'm going to wait for the next 
two runs of the models. If to, by tomorrow midday, if uh, if everything starts to cave in the direction of the flatter look, then I will make the appropriate adjustments uh, and you know go back and look and see what exactly uh, went wrong. I know. By the way, I've had a number. I know a number of you have requested. Could I cover Virginia, Maryland, and and so on? I will try my best to to to, to focus a little time on this. And so, with respect to uh, your area uh, for Maryland and Virginia, uh, if the here's the NAMS view, uh, I'm going to go with it. We'll, we'll use the GFS as the more conservative view on this because you know my my gut feeling is telling me that this is going to probably wind up being flatter i mean you do get some rain out of this and a little bit of snow that changes over because if this is going to be flatter and flatter you're going to wind up with snow further south so that could mean you know maybe more snow in southern new jersey uh, maryland and northern delaware and northeastern virginia from this low as it goes out and then you're going to turn cold uh and dry, you're going to probably miss out on the warm front because that's going to set up to your north uh, for the weekend. And with respect to those of you <clears throat> in Michigan, uh, that warm front does produce some snow and a little bit of freezing precipitation too, right near where the, the warm front is uh, on uh, Friday. What is this now? Friday daytime? Yeah, this will be Friday daytime into Friday night. And into Saturday you know while we have it doing that why don't I take care of my buddies up in the Canadian Maritimes because I know for every once in a while you guys like to ask and and I don't want to forget you so let's go to Southeast Canada where are you here we go Southeast Canada on the GFS and we'll back this up because if you get this flattish low that goes out it actually strengthens into a decent storm so Nova Scotia gets some decent snow especially the uh, eastern part and some snow and freeze and sleet into Newfoundland and then back over to snow before it ends nice cold shot of air and then after that what do we got well we got this next low along about day six that straddles Nova Scotia with some big snows and then on up into Newfoundland and yeah it gets pretty deep that goes up there and it starts rotating around so you know it hits that block you know this is how how systems behave i mean when it hits that block it can't go east so it starts to turn northwest north and northwestward and that's what these systems are going to want to do if that blocking signature sets up so uh we'll leave it at that here at this point i'll do a video tomorrow uh at midday when the new models are out so we can update them for you if you are uh, if you've been on this long i'm thinking you like it so if you do uh hit the subscribe button on my youtube channel i really would appreciate it if you become a subscriber it's absolutely free and it gives you the convenience of every time a video comes up you'll get a notification and then you can go ahead and take a good look at it um, you can check out my latest uh, posts and snowfall forecasts on meteorologist and for Long Island, you can use weatherlongisland.com for the latest Long Island information. And if you want specific forecasts, uh, you can for New York, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, the Hudson Valley, and Eastern Pennsylvania, you can download my app and subscribe to my forecast, which is just a buck a month. And uh, I would appreciate that greatly if you wound up doing that. But there's absolutely no obligation, of course. And uh, we will hopefully get some clarity on all this uh, tomorrow and something tells me we probably won't but I hope we get to see get a little bit of clarity uh, as far as this is concerned you can tell by the way you know it's late at night I just came home from my job at Fios One News uh, which covers Long Island New Jersey and the Hudson Valley so I'm a little bit tired and then when you look at you're looking at this stuff all day long you know your mind just kind of gets like jello it's usually at the point um, th th that when you get situations like this that I often, you know, wonder, uh, maybe I should, you know, these are times when you wish you had done something else for a living, but I really just love this. So it's all, it's part of the, it, it, it's, it's, it's part of the game. And, you know, you sometimes, you know, you're going to get situations like this where you're not, it's not going to be clear or for that matter, when you think it's clear. And then all of a sudden, you get a curveball thrown at you, and you wind up uh, having to adjust and change your forecast 
personally, I if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I say so, and I I examine why I'm I I made my made my error, and go from there. And I think that's you know I've always tried to keep a very honest approach to my forecasting, uh, and a very honest approach to you know how I um, accept my failures and and uh, try to uh, learn from them. I've been doing this for uh, boy 37 38 years professionally and I still am learning. And I you know I, I think I try to tell the young folks, you know, you got to you, you got to cut your teeth uh, trying to figure out all this stuff and it's um it's not easy, but it's a whole lot it's an awful lot of fun. And I'm so glad that all of you are on here enjoying it with me. And I can see that from the engagement that I have, <clears throat> some of the comments that you put up on uh, on on the uh, videos. So I think it's time for me to go to sleep now. Even my cat Kovu, which was who was here before, um, has gone off to tuck himself in on his uh, blanket. And at this stage, we will say good night. And I will again update you with a new video probably around midday tomorrow Eastern time.